much to do, so much to see, so get your ass up out of bed. Get out now, time's wasted, there's no reward for hesitating. Hey gang, got uh, three little stories for you today. Uh, stuff that took place when I lived in Oak Harbor, Washington. Right, lived uh, lived there because my wife at the time was uh, in the Navy. She was stationed there at Nass Whidbey Island, which is why I've got this patch on my leather that uh, people have mentioned here and there. Yeah, so lived in uh, Oak Harbor, Washington, which is basically just a town right around the naval base there, right? When we first got there, we didn't have a vehicle, so I ended up buying this um, Oldsmobile uh, Delta 88, a 1978 Oldsmobile, right, for like $600. And it looked just like this one. Yeah, it's a great car, okay? It's a lot. A lot of, a lot of car, it's huge, right? And uh, anyhow, I have this Uga horn that I wired up to it. I don't even remember why I had the damn horn, but I hooked it up to it. Uh, you know, it kind of goes, Uga, right? When you push the horn button, it goes, Ooh, when you let it up, it's like, Gah! it's super loud, right? Super attention grabbing. So I look for any reason to honk the horn at people. Anyhow, um, one day, I was driving, I don't remember what I was doing. I was by myself though. And uh, I decided to take a shortcut around Walmart, the parking lot in the back of Walmart, right? Used it as a shortcut sometimes. And there was a lady driving in front of me, right? We were driving down the little lane in the uh, <clears throat> parking lot. Now bear in mind, there's like landscaping on each side, so you have to drive through there, and every now and then, you know, there's a little driveway. So anyhow, we got to this intersection. She pulled up to it and stopped, and there was these kids skating. And uh, in the middle of the lane there, so she couldn't get by, so she stopped and waited. And they didn't care, they saw her, right, and they didn't care. They just kept skating, didn't get out of the way or nothing. So she waited a few seconds, and finally, you know, she puts it in reverse. I see her backup lights come on, so I look back up, you know, and she backs up, turns, and goes another way uh, to a different route and goes around these kids, right? So then I pull up. Right where, the, right where she had been and stopped, right? They still didn't care. They just keep skating right in front of me. All of a sudden, I'm like, Ugh! with that horn, they just scattered and ran for their fucking lives. And uh, then I'm like, <laughs> drive through there in my big ass boat of a car. And uh, they're looking like, <laughs> all horrified. It was just fucking hysterical to watch them scramble. Okay, so anyhow, yeah, that was a great car, uh, but unfortunately, being 1978, it didn't last real well. I ended up, I had to get rid of it because the transmission fell out from under it, so ended up selling it for a song. Hmm, I still remember that song. Yeah, so anyhow, we had to get a new vehicle, right? So we ended up going to a dealership and um, shelling out $8,000 for a 1995 Ford Windstar minivan, just like this one. Yeah, it was just like that one, same color and everything. And it was a great vehicle, I'm surprised. In fact, it lasted a good long time. It was a great vehicle, workhorse, man, you'll be surprised. But yeah, I was driving a minivan, I'm not ashamed to say. I was a stay-at-home dad for my three-year-old daughter, right? And I was also babysitting this little boy. And I was homeschooling them, right? My daughter was in gymnastics, and so I was doing the whole stay-at-home uh, dad thing with the minivan, right? But I was still the same person, right? Still acted the same, still listened to the same kind of music, still dressed the same. In fact, I was wearing the same jacket at the time of this story, which is actually an important part. So anyhow, we're done shopping at Walmart. Yeah, well, it's Walmart again. It's really the only big super center type thing on the island there, so that's where we had to go. And uh, come out of there, and I, you know, load the kids up in the van, buckle them in their little car seats, and put the shit in the back, right? And then we head out. And uh, there's another guy in a car in front of us, pulling out. So he pulls up to the stop sign to leave the parking lot, and I pull up behind him and stop. It just sits there, right? So I look, I see he's on the phone in there. So I'm like, beep, beep, you know, give him a little beep to wake up. 
Dude looks in the rear view mirror, flips me off. So of course, flip him off too. Dude got out of the car. Okay, pops the door open, steps out. This 40 year old, something year old dude in a suit. Comes walking back to me. So of course, I put it in park. And I stepped out. <laughs> dude took one look at me, jumps back in the car, takes off out of there like a bat out of hell. And I think the reason is because he had come up with this idea of what I must be like based on the minivan thing. <laughs> Thought I was some soccer mom or whatever. And he was going to come back and give me a piece of his mind. <laughs> but uh, he changed his mind real quick and I just thought that was funny. Alright, so next story. Still takes place in Oak Harbor, Washington. Doesn't have anything to do with a car this time, but I was in photography school at the time, right? So Ritz Camera in Oak Harbor, Washington was my place. Where I got my film processed, you know. Where I got all my filters and lenses and all that sort of thing, right? Well, one time my camera needed repair, so I took it there. I did that too, and dropped it off to get it repaired. And then, I don't know, a couple weeks later they called me and let me know that it was ready to pick up. And so I go in there, pick up my camera. And I was dressed exactly the way I am right now, right? Which if anybody out there who knows me knows this isn't all that out of the ordinary, right? Got the urban camo and I had black t-shirt tucked in, right? I don't always wear the same pattern of camo, but this day I was wearing this urban camo. And, um... You know, I didn't, wasn't really trying to be edgy or anything like that, but at the same time, I didn't suppose it was really all that common, you know what I mean? And anyhow, I go to Ritz camera, go in, pay him, you know, give me back my camera. I strapped it around my shoulders like this and started heading out. I got to the door and this girl walked in, dressed exactly the same with camera strap around the shoulder too. It's had the same urban camo with the same black t-shirt tucked in, right? Is like the fucking photographer's uniform, right? And so me and her both just kind of look at each other for a moment like what the hell? And then I went out and she went in and that was it, right? And I don't think I ever saw her again. I don't know. But uh it's just crazy I can't help but wonder what if you know because obviously we're very similar people right and uh, who knows I mean an alternate timeline I probably ended up getting together with her and maybe we're still together all right so those are my stories for today hope that you found them interesting and uh, we'll talk to you later